Hey, how's it going everybody? My name is Magnum Martell. Please enjoy this fabulous Cuphead footage, because even though I am bad at this game, I am nowhere near as bad as some games journalists. And speaking of game journalists, Kotaku is in trouble, and I find it funny. Ha 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 ha, fuck you. I'm in a good mood this week, because we've got some news. Glorious, glorious, ever-famous Kotaku is in trouble. Yes, that's right, ladies and gentlemen, Kotaku, the games journalist extraordinaire website, is in danger of, well, quite frankly, losing most of its staff, being shut down, and maybe, just maybe, best of all, a complete revitalization. Is it likely? No, to be quite honest with you, I don't think it is. But the news comes this week from a situation in which... Giano Media, the people who own Kotaku, Gizmodo, Deadspin, Jezebel, <laughs> told someone over at Deadspin, which is a sports com a sports media place, by the way, they are supposed to cover sports. One of their people got told to stop being political and focus on the subject they are paid to write about. That's the gist of it. I don't have the exact quote here for here you, but. That is the gist. That's the long and short of what they were told. So, how well do you think they took that? On a scale of 1 to 10. If you guessed negative 10, you would be absolutely correct. So, the person who... I, I, I'm pretty sure the guy got fired. I'm, I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. I'll have to double check and I'll let you know in the comments. But, all the same, the person got told to stop focus, to stop making... Pu pushing politics where they don't belong. And they didn't want to. They refused. Well, in their refusal to this, um, the rest of the Kotaku staff decided to defy their superiors at GNO Media. Yeah, you can't make this up. You can't make this up. They've all started replacing their profile pictures on Twitter with uh, some kind of union group that is specifically for games, for journalists. You know how it is. Anyway, they're mad. They're fighting, and they're sending out all these tweets asking for sympathy and all this other who's he, what's it, have you. It, it doesn't matter. The f It comes down to, quite simply, someone was told to stop being political all the damn time and to cover the subject they are paid to cover. Now, as you know, the ever-famous cucks over at Kotaku, like Jason Schreier and all his boys, they love to be political. They love to push their their political messages into their articles. I mean, do we need to call back to just a little while ago when a... I can't remember if it was IGN or Kotaku. I think I'm pretty sure it was Kotaku. One of their staff wrote a uh, an article. I have some screenshots here for you about Dead or Alive and Resident Evil... Resident Evil 2's remake. One is about praising the Beach Boy mod, which puts Leon and Mr. X in Speedos, mind you. The other is about condemning dead or alive for having the titty jiggles you can't make this up i'm this this is a thing that happened this is real this is old news by now i think i covered it actually i can't remember if i did or not if not i intended to either way this happened these are the people that push politics into their into their writing these are the people that everything they touch they ruin quite simply put <laughs> These are people like Jason Schreier and Kotaku who hate on gamers and straight white males and all this other happy horse shit. These are the people that write these articles that work for these companies. They finally got told, finally, after all this time, to write about the shit they're supposed to be writing about. And to stop pushing a bunch of crap that doesn't belong in. There's some other controversy here about atrocious ads, and that, that's a quote here. But let's, we'll get to that in a minute. The bottom line being, the boys at Kotaku are mad that they're being told they're not allowed to push asinine politics into video game related content anymore. This is how far games journalism has fallen. These people are defying their superiors and trying to get a union to protect them when they're doing something that is not their job. Here's my advice to all the Kotaku writers that don't want to keep your job that 
want to continue writing about politics, go go work for somebody else. Go work for someone else. Quite simple. If you want to write about something besides video games, go work for the people that write about those things. It's not hard. It might not be easy to get that job, especially given what you do, but, I mean, it's better you try than continue to ruin something that you've infested. Because that's what you are. That's what you social justice people are. You're an infestation. You're a plague, slowly infecting everything you touch, all those communities. And I have a video coming up about that, too, actually. Um, so before we go on to the, uh, the atrocious ads, quote-unquote, I just want to direct your attention to this little response to the Quarterings video, which I will link down in the description about their strike and all this, by Raiden Golden Eagle, one of my personal favorite content creators, actually. I thoroughly enjoy his stuff. If you like him and you're against social justice politics and you like a more saucy side like myself, a little more blunt, go check him out. Where he says, direct quote here, It really sucks when a bunch of outsiders move in and force you to alter slash destroy everything you've built up and been enjoying for over a year, doesn't it? Ooh, the brutality! Someone get Shao Kahn in on this to call it brutality because that was mean. And I love it. And that's why I like it. Anyway, so I've got an article here about uh, Kotaku staff respond to Gino Media's insertion of, quote, atrocious ads. Here we go. An interesting situation has developed across the pond. Several staff members at Kotaku's U.S.-based offices have taken to Twitter after a unique situation in which it and Gino Media websites published a post complaining about the new atrocious ads that were eventually removed by the organization's board. The post, in which featured Geno Media's sites including Gizmodo, Deadspin, and Jezebel, highlighted atrocious autoplay ads were appearing as the result of the new private equity owner management team. The posts were quickly removed by Geno Media's ex executive, but not seemingly soon enough. Vice reports, let me, uh, let me open up this Vice article here. Geno Media's staff is fighting, is fighting its staff over objectively bad autoplay ads. And they quote objectively bad here. It's an ad, 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 ad world. God, I hate that. <laughs> it's a call I'm exploring, blah, 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 ad Monday. Okay, so they, they have the report. I'll leave a link to both of those articles for you to read yourself. Let's continue the one I'm currently reading. The Post lead readers to send 1,300 emails asking for autoplay ads to be removed. Fucking 1,300. Holy shit. The various sites staff redirected the removal of the post in various ways, but perhaps not. Not most notably, Deadspin Deputy Editor Barry Pachetsky permitted non-sports non posts like Three Good Dogs I Met and Check Out the Wheels on This Pumpkin Thief to appear after a memo from GNO Media's ed editorial director, Paul Mid Maidment? Midment? Ma I think it's Maidment. Asked him to focus on sports and not politics, pop culture, arts, and the rest. And I will leave this one here. It is an article by the Daily Beast. It's about the letter telling Deadspin to focus on the thing they are paid to write about. Kotaku, Kotaku's Jason Cucker. Oh, I'm sorry. Schreier. Sorry. Sorry. I mispronunciated your name. I, I thought for certain your name was Cucker. Like Mark Zuckerberg. I'm pretty sure his real name is Cuckerberg. That's not the point. Steven Toledo? What? Toledo. Is that supposed to be a burrito type thing? I, it doesn't matter. G Gita Jackson, Gita, Gita? I, I don't fucking know, and Heather Alexandria took to Twitter afterwards to comment on their working situations. Around the same time, Deadspin Deputy Editor Barry Pachetsky confirmed he was fired for not sticking to smart because you gotta have my politics. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm in such a good mood, I'm just blowing through, th through this really fast. But So uh, there we have it, as I explained. They were fired for shoehorning politics into their nonsensical bullshit. Into their posts, of which they are not paid to write about. Jason Schreier had this to say, and we have the tweet here. If the atrocious ads on our website are bothering you, here is how, how to contact Kotaku's new private equity owner management team. And he left an, uh, a link here. GMG Union, that's the union representing these people. I'm glad I got that. I should have just read the article outright instead of going on a tangent, but that's not the point. Anyway, so more or less, Jason wants this uh, this GMG Union people 
And all these people, including Jason, Heather, Gita, Gita, Barry, they're all changing their logo to the G&G &G Media Union. Basically, this union, they think this union is going to protect them. And you know what? Let's talk about workers' unions for a second. They, they're a good thing. Their primary purpose is to protect the worker and their worker and the workers' rights from horrible bosses. I mean, sometimes they do a terrible job at it. Sometimes they are used and manipulated by the workers to not properly do their job, like right now. I can't tell you, being from Pennsylvania, how many potholes we've I've run through. How many people have complained about their cars being damaged, and then the construction companies that are supposed to fix them get told, oh yeah, we're working on it. And then it takes them two and a half years to fix a pothole the, the size of my the size of my foot. And uh, for those of you curious about the size of my foot, I wear a size 13 in steel toe boots. So, I, I don't have a very small foot. If that tells you anything. <laughs> anyway, so that's where we are today. There hasn't really been any developments in the past week about this. I just wanted to cover it because I absolutely despise Kotaku. And I think it's funny that they're finally getting what they deserve. I think it's absolutely hysterical. And if you haven't seen it, here's a nice little screenshot about a tweet I tweeted out to Jason Schreier myself just now before recording this video about the thumbnail that I planned to use. I'm probably not going to use it. But I am going to keep that image, and you can see the image and the tweet over on my Twitter, which is linked. Thanks for watching, everybody. My name is Magnum Martell. This has been another glorious episode of, of Magnum's Rant slash Let's Talk Gaming. And um, I will see you next time. I'm looking forward to seeing how this goes. Do I think Kotaku is going to really fall? No, no, I don't think they're going to go anywhere. Um, in fact, I'm absolutely certain that Kotaku is going is here to stay and they're not going to go anywhere. But I do think that there might be some changes, hopefully, for the better. So let me know what you think down in the comments below. What do you think about Jason Schreier Kotaku in this whole situation? And uh, I'll see you next time. Hey everybody, it's Magnum here. I just wanted to let you know that if you like the background footage in this video, I recorded it myself. I edited it together myself, and it's publicly available over on my sibling channel, Black Air Productions. Over there, I use that channel for a lot of passion projects and side things that won't be appearing here on the main channel, but I also have a playlist dedicated to all of my background footage. I take the time to record all of my background footage myself, cut it, clip it together, and make sure it looks nice and neat. And I, I'm aware, well aware in fact, that a lot of creators lack the ability to do that and have their own stock footage. So, I created a playlist over on that channel where any and all of my stock footage can be found. I usually upload the stock footage itself a day or two after the video in which it first appeared comes out. So to anyone who's interested and wants some easy, simple, generic stock footage of some regular-ass gameplay of various games, it's available over there. The only thing that I ask is that I, on either on my Magnum Motel or my Black Air Productions channel, be credited as where the footage came from. Thanks for watching, everybody, and I'll see you later.